All right, I decided to make a different video. We did make it home back to Ohio, but this kind of video is just walking around. Her dad, uh, my wife's dad, always camps on Memorial Day weekend, and you know, they've got a big family. Of course, we don't have the fancy cars and, and the trucks and the new campers, so. Normally we don't stay, we come down and spend the day with them. I love camping, but when it comes down to feeling like you fit in, I don't know if anybody else out there feels that way, but you ever felt like the black sheep of the family? Because we sure are, both of us. That's the, I guess that's why I, she was been married four times and I've been married three, you know six boys together but we don't fit in I have a big family she has a big family but no matter they always look down on you because you don't normally her dad's a lot better than his uh, family but my wife was adopted by her dad she never knew who he was so, uh, Tony's a wonderful guy that I don't know whenever you if you know people that are uh, adopted instead of their own they're always treated you know not the same as regular family and believe me his whole family feels the same way most of the time but you know from a kid I always just felt like I never fit in. You ever felt like you have a huge family, but no matter where you go, you know, you sit down and the rest of the people move, you know? I never understood it. Only thing I could ever figure out is, you know, God give us what we're here for. And some of us, I just don't think that, you know, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you do for family and friends, you can't lead them to, you can lead them to Jesus, but you can't get them to, uh, you can't say the words for them. So, I don't know. I used to have a, a uh, what do you call them? A therapist, wonderful little bitty lady. Man, she wouldn't put up with making yourself not you know if I wouldn't dress right because I've had severe depression she would make me she wouldn't even see me that day she said when you get a chance you come in looking like you know you didn't just come off the streets so then we'll talk that's kind of hard when you're dealing with depression but that lady knew what she's talking about some people's Facebook I mean YouTube accounts they're about everything else but this and I wish there was like a, a place where you can make it so you can all sit around the campfire you don't have to be in the same you know state you know you can be with family no matter how who your family is what they're about it's just especially the last few days it's been really, really heavy. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. I'm sure everybody else out there has been feeling that way. There's just something, you know, after going to the Four Corners and I'll make out a different video, but there's something out there that is very, very evil right now. And it ain't getting better, it's getting worse. The Indian lady, the Zuni Indian lady we bought our pot from, she said that you better be ready because the ancient in, uh, elders told, foretold of a time just like this that we're living in now. You know, I believe that no matter where you're at, you know, they worship the Creator like we worship God. Sometimes, actually, I think they are a whole lot.
closer to God than we are ever are. I don't know. That I've been trying to figure out what it was that that Zuni Indian lady. She just she looked you right in the eyes and it, she, you felt it. You didn't have to say a word. You seen it in her eyes, in her soul. Something is wrong. And the other day, my nephew calls me and he says, I've been studying Indian prophecy and it's the prophecy of all the white animals in the last days and where the Indians are supposed to meet up and to be safe. I said, what are you talking about? Because I heard it from, you know, I read, read about it out of the Four Corners area about the different tribes meeting up in one valley and at, between the four mountain peaks. And I didn't tell him anything about, you know, set studying that or seeing that. He just called up and he says, now out of five animals, they have seen four. All they're waiting on is the white deer. So it, uh, he didn't know how to say anything. He didn't know what to think. I said, uh, that's when I told him what I knew about what happened at the Four Corners with the Navajo and the Hopi. But the Zuni lady, she, she gave us the pot in which to dry the flowers and the sage and to burn it. She said that's the only way to keep these, this type of evil away. And some people, Christians, don't believe in burning incense or anything. But believe me, I'll do anything to keep that Satan away from me. It don't matter. After I met Jeremiah at the Four Corners, when you hear God, he was all over it. He couldn't wait. But Satan couldn't have pulled him away from her. I don't understand everything. It's so jumbled in my head right now. They're all, you know, they're the ancient prophets that all foretold of this time we're living in. And no matter where you go or who you ask, you can find an answer to anything you want, you know, but unless, unless it's the truth. You know, the Bible says, Paul says, the Bible's spiritually written and spiritually discerned. And he couldn't learn off of the elders, the man kind of the world. He had to learn by faith through Jesus Christ. So who am I? Who are you? I don't know how your Memorial Day is working, weekend's been. And this is probably just a dumb recording, but I just figured walking around this circle of the camp, if you're sitting at home, you can see it and just listen to some old fat dude walking around talking to himself like they're doing. It's crazy. They all look at you like you're nuts, not knowing you're making a video. And the video probably won't show up much, but hopefully the, the words come out and everything. I don't know. You know, I don't know how y'all's week has been, but I just know mine all the way home, 1,400 miles back to Ohio. I had plenty of time to sit and think while the wife and friend were sleeping. And I have no idea. I know that I'm putting my life out on the, out there for God to lead and I'm to follow. But you gotta at least take the step. And I kept telling my wife, I don't know what's next. I couldn't even dream of what's next. I'm not afraid. I mean, I went 1,200 miles to the Four Corners just because I dreamt it. I dreamt God told me to go there and I get there and there's another guy sitting there. His name's Jeremiah. And he was waiting. It, what's the odds of that? If you've ever been to the Four Corners, you know there's nothing there. <laughs> nothing. And the Navajo have two armed guards uh, 
protecting anybody coming in or out of there. They will not allow anybody in there. It's all open air. Why are they doing that? How are you doing? I wish I had the energy these kids do. But what's going on? You know, my videos ain't for most people, but it ain't. I, I just got somewhere. Maybe there's one person out there that has a big family or has no family. You know, me and my wife are so close to being exactly the same. No matter how big your family is, unless you have true family, you're lonely. And I understand how bad loneliness hits. You know, there's them people, I doubt if you can see, but right there's the fire. And everybody stares at you when you sit down. And, but I don't care. God gave me a family. And I don't care what four corners of the world that God wants me to go to. I'll do whatever it takes to make sure somebody out there don't feel totally alone. You know, there's nothing worse than sitting in your house. I used to have a chair, the ugly old chair, but I wouldn't get rid of it. And right after my ex-wife ran off with the girlfriend, I had to get right with myself because I was married nine and a half years and then I was married 13 years with the, my second wife. I never knew who I was. So I spent many, many months sitting in my chair, staring at the walls of my little apartment, trying to figure out who I am. What is it God has planned for me? That's when I took off and went, decided to go out to Oregon. I always wanted to go back to the mountains because my mama was born and raised in Alaska, one of 14 kids. And I love the mountains, but I was 30, no, 40, one 42 when I left, went out there from Indiana. And uh, I keep looking at the pictures of that day because it almost to the day I stopped at the same place that I stopped at my first trip to Oregon. Here it is seven or eight years later. And I'm able to take and look at myself, but this time knowing I'm not running. I'm going for what God wants me to. Where and what, I don't know. But all I seen was people hurting people from one side of this country all the way to the other. The hope in people's eyes are gone. I don't know if anybody else out there sees it, but I do. If this video cuts short, I'm sorry. I can't figure out how long it's gonna let me talk. But please pray for everybody. Pray for those that don't have somebody that feels like they are alone they're not alone I've had family and friends that I didn't step up and help when I should have some of them committed suicide just because they needed somebody to talk to you know I, I've been around a lot of people with mental issues a lot of people and I've learned that 90 percent of all your problems can be worked out just by having somebody to talk to somebody that you know will be there to listen because believe me there was many years I had nobody but Jesus yeah it made me a lot closer to Jesus a lot closer and I praise God every day that I had that time with Jesus and now I need to put that kind of time back into talking with Jesus because what's coming and you we don't there's only one thing to save you you can prepare all you want to but what's coming is a thousand times worse than what we can even imagine 
God had us handpicked for this very time in history. Every one of us. You know, the Bible says even he has every hair numbered in your head. There's nothing that God doesn't see. When you see that kind and you understand how awesome God is, then you can put more faith in God that he's going to help you. He's going to control what you need. He's going to give you the answers. But then you've got to take the first step. You'll know what the first step is when God comes and tells you what you need to do. Watch out, not get run over. But I'm praying tonight for everyone. I'm going to pray as I walk if it don't bother you. Dear Heavenly Father, we all come to you. Anyone that hears this or sees this, Father God, please let them understand that you will never leave their side. No matter how bad or how low we feel, that you and your son Jesus Christ are always right there. Father God, forgive those that have trespassed against us and forgive us for sinning against them. So we, none of us are perfect, but Jesus, you died on the cross so that we may be saved. You told, you say in your word that the Bible spiritually written and spiritually discerned Father God, give us the discernment of what we need to hear, what we need to know. Because without you, we're nothing. We have nobody. We have no hope. So, Father God, we come to you and we ask you with everything inside of us. Father God, lift us up. Give us the armor of God and give us the will of a mighty lion, Father. Give us the heart of a lion. Because there's so many out here that just want to put you down and tear you down. Especially those that are closest to you. But Father God, I pray as everybody is that we can all come together in one platform so that we can all understand who you are. Dear Heavenly Father, let us, as we go our separate ways, please, please protect us. Protect our children and protect our families and our loved ones. And Father God, please let no evil or harm come about any of our family or friends. In Jesus' precious and holy name, we ask this prayer. Amen. Oh, gotta love karaoke. <laughs> oh, after I got quit drinking, I don't sound near as good as what I thought I used to. <laughs> Anyways, I hope every one of you have a good night. And I know this this video was not much of anything except the fact when you're alone, even talking to nobody, but I know somebody will out there to listen. Let everybody understand they're not alone because there's millions of other people just like yourself that just need a place to come to to understand to let us understand we got a place to go where family and friends are there with us so father god i just want everybody out there to know if you do have facebook we i started the page and i can have all the help you want to but it's called Not Perfect Christians. It's a place where you can go and ask questions about the Bible and not be afraid, not be attacked. As I don't know it all. I don't have a master's degree in divinity or Bible studies. In 2007, God gave me my diploma and it's being saved by the grace of him, his son, Jesus. So, if you want to have some place to talk, to post pictures, ask questions, you can't do that on YouTube. 
So if you want, go to Not Perfect Christians. It's out of Indiana or Ohio. But like I said, anybody want to help with administration on that, please. Because I am not a perfect guy. I don't even speak very well. I've only preached one time in front of people. I am a licensed minister, but I'm nobody but a simple Christian. I'm a master craftsman with furniture, but in my heart, I have love for those that are left behind, those that have nowhere else to run to, no one else to talk to. So understand, like I said, if you got a Facebook, and I know I don't like Facebook any more than the rest of you, but if it gives me a platform or we can start one someplace else, I would be more than happy to. Because even leaving comments in the comment section, people tear you down. I've been tore down so much by asking questions about the Bible that I'm afraid to even ask them sometimes. Just because my question sounds silly to some that you know, have studied for 10 years the book of Revelation and end times. I mean, everybody's idea of the end times is different, it seems. All I know is Jesus is coming. Do we have to make it through? I don't know. I know it says that the rapture, we will have the rapture, and I pray to God that it's before the tribulation. That's wonderful scared me <laughs> anyways I just wanted everyone to know you're not alone you always have a place this is God's family this ain't my family this ain't my wife's family my wife hates making videos that she don't even like her picture taken and I know this is weird to walk around in the dark through this campsite but we just want you to know as a family of God that you're never alone. With God, everything is possible. So, one more prayer. Father God, please be with us. Keep us safe. Let no evil or harm come upon us or our children. Let all of our unsaved family and friends come to your Son to let them know the love of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we ask that each and every one of us can turn to somebody out there and understand there's a phone call they can make and somebody's going to answer that phone because Father God I've been there so have millions of others where they picked up the phone and didn't have no one to call I mean there's been times that I picked up the phone and only people I have to call have passed on into heaven but I've done it but now I just want a place where if you have something to talk about please leave a comment in the comment section tell others that what you need is a place where we can meet and talk Father God just guide us into a place where we can all be family I guess I'll wrap this one up but Remember, leave a comment, help me out if you would, because I, I, I just started this, that's all. I want this to be a place, not perfect Christian, I don't care where it's at. It's just a place where, you know, the single mother can ask questions of another single mother or single father and get an answer without being tore down. So please, in the name of Jesus, please be with us. And if you don't like this video, please just pass on over it. It's not for everybody. I don't edit my videos at all. I just talk, I mess up, so what? So I just want you to know you're not alone. We are a family. We might not know each other's names, but we're a family. The forgotten Christians is more like it, not perfect Christians, more like the forgotten Christians. But thank you very much, and if you've made it all the way through this, 
you must have uh, a heart of gold because I didn't know I was going to be able to, to record for 24 minutes. So I let you go, and you guys have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. And remember those that have died before. Remember the veterans that give us the right to religion, the freedom of religion. But Father, please be with y'all. And Jesus, please watch us. Thank you guys, and you have a wonderful evening. God bless.